We've all heard of Leonard Cheshire, or most of us have anyway. During the war, he was awarded the Victoria Cross after completing a hundred bombing missions on heavily defended targets, which would inevitably have cut short the lives of many innocent people. After the war, with his wife, Sue Ryder, he established the well-known Cheshire Homes for the sick and the disabled. I wonder, was this his way of making up for the unenviable part he played in the war. Zacchaeus also fully intended to make recompense for dodgy dealings which he'd have got up to in the past as a collector of taxes. He tells Jesus he is willing to give half his money to the poor and pay back fourfold the people he had wronged. Wow! Now that's a turnaround, if anything is. Do we ever feel the need to make up for things we're not proud of in the past? November is designated by the church as a month of prayer for the holy souls in purgatory. Purgatory makes sense because even though people have repented of their sins in this life, they may not have fully taken on board the consequences of their actions. For instance, this could easily apply to fathers and sometimes mothers who weren't there or didn't give enough quality time to their children in their formative years when they needed them the most. Now that their children are young adults, these same parents may feel the need to make up for this and reveal an extra caring side to their character, howsoever belated this may be. Another example might be, if I gave my parents a hard time whilst growing up, the inner voice of conscience may be telling me that I show them extra love and attention as they get older. If they ask me to go that providential mile with them, with a willing heart, I will go too. I'll go even further and anticipate their needs, sparing them the awkwardness or the embarrassment of having to ask me. That's what loving one's neighbour means. Some non-Catholic Christians used to often tease us Catholics about running back and forth to confession whilst at the same time not facing up to the consequences of our failures. Confession, which has gone out of fashion for many, is the first vital stage of the reconciliation process, but there's more to it than that. Conversion involves a change of heart with a strong desire to atone for the sins we've been less than honest when we've been less than honest with people. As in the case of Zacchaeus, this especially applies to money matters. At a conference at St. Vincent's here on dementia recently, we were told that people who take on powers of attorney for vulnerable and not so vulnerable parents often cut corners with honesty and award themselves way over the top amounts of money from the said parent's account, which they are not really entitled to. We're told that's quite widespread. After all, if we remember Judas, Judas used to help himself from the common fund before he betrayed our Lord. I know Jesus atoned for all our sins on the cross, but he also offers us opportunities to be part of that expiation, just like he offers us a share in his own sufferings when we have to go through different sufferings of our own. For a small man, Zacchaeus must have felt ten foot tall when Jesus ended up in his house for dinner. Jesus is with me today in this Mass. He comes to my house in Holy Communion, just like he did to Zacchaeus. And he sees all my efforts to atone for my sins and, like Zacchaeus, experience to the full the salvation which he offers. Now, thank you very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.